Coming up on World's Greenest Homes. In Atlanta, a plantation-style house with loads of green features that are really well hidden. When we bought the house, we didn't even know the house was green. And in the Canadian Rockies, to renovate or to rebuild? That is the question. One of the main reasons that we decided to do a reno as opposed to a tear down and a rebuild was that we really liked the shell of the house. I'm Emmanuel Beliveau. Come with me on world's greenest homes and see the most extraordinary homes on the planet. Homes that are gorgeous, cool, and green. This is Georgia, the peach state, where echoes of Southern hospitality still linger. It's the heart of the American South. We're in Atlanta, the state capital. Although it's steeped in the history of the Old South, Atlanta is a progressive town. It's always seen itself part of the New South. But we're about to meet one couple who found the best of both worlds in a new development just two miles from downtown. Glenwood Park combines good old Southern charm with a new green lifestyle. Once an industrial site, it's now a developing neighborhood designed for green living, from energy saving to protecting natural resources. This house was built as a show home for the community. Its traditional southern style is exactly what our homeowners wanted. Besides, it's twice the size of their old 1920s bungalow, and to their surprise, uses only half the energy. Meet Kim and Mitch Miller. She works in sales, he does marketing. They live here with their cat, Tara. This 3,000 square foot home is classic plantation style, starting with a large front wraparound porch. Inside the front entrance, a central staircase divides the main level. On one side is the family room, which opens onto the kitchen, and a kitchen is attached to this cozy dining room. On the other side of the staircase, a hallway and gallery lead to the master bedroom and bathroom. On the second level, at the top of the landing, is a balcony. On the other side of the landing is a spare bedroom with its own bathroom and an old-style sleeping porch for those hot southern nights. On the third level, there's an office and a media room. Hi there! How are you? Good. Emmanuel. I'm Kim. Kim, pleased to meet you. Hi, I'm Mitch. Mitch, pleasure meeting you. It's a good looking porch. Thank, Thank you. you. It's huge. Thank it has you. Has a real southern flavor, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, it absolutely. does. Absolutely. Beautiful. Oh, what a great first impression. Thank you very much. Beautiful play, it's grand. There was a master craftsman that worked on the home, so there's a lot of very intricate, detailed woodwork. Beautiful crown moldings, trim, details, something else. It has that feeling of a cottage. It does, we always wanted to live in a home that had the cottage feel. When we bought the house, we didn't even know the house was green. So we just, we just liked the architecture, loved the house, and this was the house for us. Now this is, this is a tumble stone? It is, it's a recycled tumble stone. Mm -hmm. This gas fireplace is far more energy efficient than the wood burning kind, since there's no heat loss through a chimney. These are great chairs. Yeah, thank you. Those are actually repurposed. We had them refinished and reupholstered. Was this along the same layout as the pictures you saw? Absolutely. That was one of the benefit of this being a show home is I have the magazine where they did a nice photo shoot. <laughs> That's nice. You had a blueprint to follow. We did. Yes. A decorator blueprint. <laughs> nice. And you didn't have to pay for the decorator, did you? That's yeah. right. Now the flooring. The flooring is beautiful. Thank I'm assuming you. this came out of some old building someplace. Yeah, this is actually a reclaimed pine material and um, a Part of the whole being green is that it was actually pre-finished prior to being installed in the home. And that keeps any chemicals outside the home oh, for the chance to off-gas before it gets here. Next to the family room is the kitchen. This is actually my favorite place. Favorite place in the house? Why is that? Well, number one, because it's open to the family room. And of course, you always know when you entertain, where does everybody come into? The kitchen. But again, with the hard surfaces, the cabinets were completely finished prior to being installed. Right. And they used as much of the space as they possibly could. Oh, I love it. Lots so of built-ins. There is. There's a spice, spice rack over oh, there. Look at that. And you can see we have compact fluorescent light bulbs oh, you do. in all of our fixtures. Yeah. And even in the recessed lighting, they are all on dimmer switches. And actually the recessed light fixture itself is a low energy consumption. It reduces the consumption by about 70%. 70%. Yeah. 
I take it your windows are low E? They are. There's an argon gas that's filled between the panels themselves. So yes, we have a lot of lighting, but we don't get a lot of heat that comes right. in from the light themselves. Right, and there's also some UV coating on them too. Yeah. So not only energy efficient, but it keeps the home mm -hmm. very quiet. Yeah. Well, it's a great looking dining room. Once again, more craftsmanship in here. Look at that ceiling. Yeah, especially on the ceiling again, yeah. a lot of the woodwork. The size of the dining room is great because it's small. You know, you see homes today where people have large formal dining rooms and we don't live that way. Should we get to the bedroom? Yeah, absolutely. This is the hallway to our master bedroom. Lots of built-ins with the shelves and everything. We call this our gallery hallway. That's a true sign of a custom home. <laughs> All in the order. This oh. is our master bedroom. It's beautiful. This room had the definite touch of the decorator. Um, yeah. You can see she actually built the headboard into the back wall. That's something else. And I suppose if you want to ever change this, you could just pull this fabric <laughs> off and change the color theme. or Pull change. out the nice push pins and, yeah, put in new fabric on. It's a nice touch. And those transoms, that's something that was done in houses built in the 1800s. That's right. exactly right. That still, again, gives you that old feel. Glass transom windows like these are used throughout the house. They allow rooms to share daylight so they're well lit, even without any lights on. Attached to their bedroom is the sleek and elegant master bathroom. Beautiful flooring. What do you have here? Yeah, this is a... It's a natural stone? Natural yes. stone. Mm -hmm. um, again, the same with the, um, the tile. Very neutral colors. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, hang on one second. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, it's a nice it's big huge. shower. That's a rain shower? Yeah. Oh, right, nice. rainfall shower head. Nice. Tell me you guys sing in the shower. <laughs> no. No, you don't? Is it the sensor? It is. A sensor for the hot water. It knows when you enter a room, so it sends the hot water to that particular space. Now, it's up to the second level. So open up here. It's like a light well. All this light comes in and floods the whole house. Very much. Well, the great thing about your house is a lot of your energy efficient features are behind the walls. Like your recycled drywall you have back here. The drywall is 100% recycled, and the space inside has been sprayed with foam insulation. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all with the envelope of the house. Right. When it comes to construction, you get a nice sealed tight envelope, yeah. keep the heat out or keep the cold out, whatever you need to do, yeah. depending on your environment. Want me to go outside? Sure. Right. Oh, this is great. It sure is warm out here. <laughs> I think your insulation's working very well inside. It is, and if you notice, you actually don't hear anything when you came yeah. you know, inside, the, in, inside the house, but when you came outside, you can hear them working across the street and on the inner well, There's a highway right there, there isn't there? Yeah, the insulation's a great sound barrier just as well. Yeah, not just heat, but keeping that sound out. Yeah. This is nice. What's on the roof up there? Uh, the roof upstairs is a, a shingled roof, but it's a steel shingled roof, so it has the simulation of uh, pieces of granite steel. It's amazing because people actually think that it's real shingles, but, but it's, it's not. it's recycled it's, steel. Right. That's right, okay. yeah. Steel is a great recycled That should product. be great too because we shouldn't have any issue with replacing our roof in 10 years like most people do. Yeah. It should last a very long That's time. That's not going to rot on you, is it? No. Better not. not <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. That, not that kind of steel. Why don't we go inside? On this floor, there's a guest bedroom, and it has that old southern must-have, a sleeping porch. So these all open up? These all open up. And lets all the wind come through, the breeze blows in through here? It does. And of course, turn your fan on too to help with the circulation. Yeah. This is something else. What a great idea. It really has that plantation feel, doesn't it? It, yes, does. it does. It does. And I think the shutters probably give it that feel. Yeah, that's very true. Okay. All right, you want to head upstairs? Please. desk area? Yeah, this is a little cubby hole. They kind of carved out a niche there, and this is what I use as my office. Oh, this is great. Nice little public area. How do you keep it so clean? Because everyone has to walk by this and see this. It's not that easy, believe me. It looks good because you're here, but typically, <laughs> typically it's a mess. You tied it up for me. I did. Oh, that's so nice of you. Very but again, nice. just we talked about it downstairs with having all the built-ins, the shelves. This actually has all my drawers and everything. Mm -hmm. Desk built right into the wall. And this is a recycle magazine. It I've seen is. this before. Yeah, made into a vase. Yeah. What a great idea. 
I've actually never felt, are they, are they glass inside? They, they're actually No, it's paper. almost like a decoupage yeah. where they've just taken old magazines and old newspapers and uh, wound them very tightly. Mm -hmm. So where to next? Um, let's head up to the third floor. Okay. Sometimes we like to refer to the third floor, especially in the south, as the bonus room. Oh, it's an attic. No, it's Much a bonus more room. Than <laughs> it's a bonus room. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call it a bonus room other than, I guess, the obvious, right? Pretty much that is it. Uh, bonus room meaning that they just had bonus space, so you get a lot of irregular um, ceilings, irregular you know, footprint of the room itself. Yeah. What do you use the space for? Uh, mainly, I, I've got my office, and then also we use this as our media room as well. And actually, there's a full bathroom off of here. This That's bathroom beautiful. actually has a piece of reclaimed wood uh, that they pulled out of a, an old farm and the decorator decided to use that as a vanity. That's great. An old piece of wood, throw a sink on top, put some plumbing in, and bingo. Yep, works real well. That's really nice. So how often are you up here? <laughs> every Friday and every Saturday night and every Sunday night. Is that movie night? Usually every Friday is. night is our movie night. Okay, where do you guys sit? Yeah. Who, who's, who's who? Okay, that's his chair. This is my chair. What? That's who not, sits back here? <laughs> that's not really the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I sit here Kim lays on the floor and she has a blanket and she falls asleep in the first five minutes of the movie. Oh, I see. And then you finish watching the movie all by yourself? Yes. Absolutely. Heading back downstairs, we go outside to a courtyard or terrace, a little green oasis in the middle of the house. Well, this is great. You can enter your courtyard off your bedroom. Yep. You can, basically off of both sides of the house. There's French doors that enter out here. Well, the great thing about your courtyard being in the center of your house, it's allowing a lot of natural light to get in different parts of your home. Yeah, it does, absolutely. You have a drain in the middle of the floor? We mm -hmm. do, so if we use anything that gets watered, all gets captured here and goes into our 500 gallon tank that's used to, again, <laughs> water our um, landscaping. Yeah, so the water from this drain as well as the water from the driveway all goes over to the sister. The courtyard is in the center of the house, but leads out to the driveway. This looks like pervious pavement. It mm -hmm. is. Actually, the rain goes right through. And it's a 100% recycled material, and they actually painted it on site to uh, give it a more reflective coating. Yeah, because black asphalt can get pretty <laughs> hot, I'm sure, especially in Atlanta. Well, you mentioned you do collect water. Where's your cistern? We do. Cistern's it's right around the, the corner. Oh, OK, here you go. And you got it covered in some evergreens, mm -hmm. so it's not an eyesore. Right. We do. So it's 500 gallons, and it catches all the rainwater. There's a pump that's a little bit farther down, which is hooking to the weather track system. So if, if the weather track system is reading that, that there's uh, just sunny days, no rain, it will just automatically water the yard for us. On the other side of the garage is another energy saving feature that came with the house. I see solar panels, that must be your roof. Yes, this is actually the best vantage point to see the panels. How many do you have? We have 11 of them on the house. And how much power does that make? Uh, about 1.4 kilowatts. From a percentage point of view, how much power is that to run your house? About 20% of our overall power needs are generated by the solar panels. Now that I've seen the house, I want to take another look at the green feature on that wraparound front porch that I noticed on the way in. And the floor, this looks like recycled garbage bags and wood? Mm -hmm. It is. It's all recycled material. Mm -hmm. We love it. It doesn't have to be stained like traditional wood, and um, it doesn't fade. Uh, well, very durable material. It's a great product. It's the same color through and through. If you scratch it, cut it, and it's easy to work with. And the great thing is, over the years, as it starts to wear down, it starts to get soft. Hmm. And it feels like pumice stone, so it's really nice on the feet. You can go bare feet on here, it feels great. Well, I like to know maintenance myself. Kim and Mitch bought a traditional southern style home and got way more than they bargained for. A ready-made, eco-friendly home that's great on the pocketbook. Do you tell your friends all about it? We do. <laughs> we do, and I think sometimes they get sick of hearing about us, yeah. <laughs> claiming our electric bills are <laughs> so much lower. <laughs> nice, uh, nice. Well, thank you so much for the tour. I had a wonderful time. Oh, oh very you, good. We enjoyed having Thanks. you here. Well, it was a great time. You guys enjoy your porch. Okay. Take care. Thank enjoy you. the sunsets. Bye. From Atlanta, we headed to the Great White North, where our next homeowners had a big problem. What do you do when you have the perfect location, but your house is crumbling? Do you tear it down, or do you renovate? And can you go green in the process? Well, these next homeowners, they found a way. Whistler is in British Columbia, Canada, about a three-hour drive north of Seattle. This is one of the world's top winter playgrounds, with mountain ranges and glaciers spread across 8,000 acres. 
With scenery like this, it's no surprise our next homeowners love where they live. But three years after moving in, they discover problems in the foundation of their home. There was mold on the floor joists and that started the whole project. So it was a very small project, ended up being a very big project. But in that process, we tried to save what we could, recycle what we could, and then reuse what we could. Meet the Edwards family. Mike is an IT consultant and his wife Julie runs her own structural design business. They have two kids, Olivia 10 and Max who's 7. This is an upside down house with the main living space upstairs. On the ground floor there's a master bedroom and bathroom, two kids rooms and their bathroom. Upstairs on the second floor is the main open concept living space. It includes a kitchen, dining room, lounge area, and a TV room tucked around the corner. Hi, Hi I'm Mike. There. This is Julie. Welcome to our home. Hi, come, come on, on in. in. So this is our home. This is our hallway, our entranceway. But you have to go upstairs to get to the main living space. In Whistler, things tend to be upside down. The living accommodations generally tend to be downstairs, while upstairs is a, more of the views. When Mike and Julie realized they had to make some big changes to the house, the question was, do they rebuild or do they renovate? One of the main reasons that we decided to do a reno as opposed to a tear down and a rebuild was that we really liked the shell of the house. One of the features of the shell of the house that we really loved was the ceiling. It's a really nice uh, open ceiling. The quarter cut rough hewn cedar is beautiful. It's quite expensive and it's relatively rare now. So we want to keep incorporating that uh, into the project. And during the rebuild, Mike and Julie were able to recycle 75% of the construction waste. Uh, well, throughout the build, any wood product was uh, put off to the side and recycled, or it would be cut up for firewood. Also, a lot of the fixtures in the house. I mean, our toilets went, our kitchen cabinets, our windows, lighting. our chimney, our lighting. Yeah. I mean, we pretty much got rid of everything. They also made sure that almost all the new materials, like the timber in these cabinets, were sourced locally. One of the main things with our kitchen was because it is an open concept, we didn't want it to look too much like a kitchen. I wanted it to kind of meld in with the rest of the upstairs area. The countertop is also locally sourced and made of quartz, the most abundant mineral on the planet. I wanted something that was a little muted and softer and didn't have a lot of texture with it. So. This worked out quite nicely for us, and it also, once again, ties in with the color scheme. As much as I love this, and it's great, we always have people around here, there's always a ton of kids, but one thing is, it is a very big area to clean every day. I'm constantly wiping crumbs off this thing, but that's okay. The family spreads out, and you got to put it back together every night. When it came to keeping the place warm, they were able to recycle a quarter of the home's insulation. We did a blow test on the property, and uh, so they put a big blower in the front door, and that tests the sealant of the house. By taking off the roof, putting in more insulation, sealing up from the, from the top down, we were able to uh, increase our energy efficiency. They also installed an HRV, a heat recovery ventilation system, and radiant floor heating. When you make a home that is that airproof, then you have to get an HRV, and that allows heated fresh air to come into the home every 20 minutes. We have it set on a timer, so every 20 minutes we have fresh air blows through the house. So with radiant floor heating, it's great because there is no airflow, uh, so there are no allergens or pollutants that are going through the air. These lights are fun. I really like these, actually. I found previously that we'd have lots of lower level light, but nothing shining up into the ceiling, so it would get kind of dark in there, a little bit cave-like. So these lights were great because they uplight and they highlight the ceiling. And they're such a kind of fun, too, because if you want to go the other way, you can. So we have these throughout the dining room and the living room. Tucked around the corner is the family's favorite place to relax. This is just good for a lot of this. Rainy Whistler day, <laughs> a little TV watching. This is a great area. I love it because while the whole upstairs is an open concept, it is kind of nice just to have an area where you can get away. So I think we worked hard on segregating the areas. Mm -hmm. You can kind of get away from everyone. But there's no getting away from the fact this is Whistler, British Columbia. All the windows are designed to make the most of the light and the views, summer or winter. Today is a very cold, rainy, windy day, but it doesn't feel like that inside the house. It's still very light, still very airy, uh, even on the worst days that Whistler has. The window pattern follows the sun pattern, so the sun rises behind us here and goes straight across there. And so our big exposure windows, these ones heat the house up early in the morning 
going across and they get progressively smaller as the heat is more intense during the day. So we do get bright, beautiful light the whole day through. Next stop is maybe Mike's favorite part of their upside down home. So now we're in our living room and I think this is a great example of what we were trying to achieve. It's a great open space, wonderful natural light. This is our outdoor area. In the spring, summer, fall, we use this every day. We decided to go with the glass enclosure just to keep the space open and to be able to view the garden. Like all the new timber in the house, the cedar decking was sourced locally, and Julie found these chairs in the recycling center in Whistler Village. But it's the surroundings that make this deck a favorite spot. Beautiful views. We've got Black Home Mountain right there. You can see the ski lifts. <laughs> We've got Whistler Mountain. Yeah. Both are capped uh, with snow most of the... The whole year. Well, yeah. the whole year. The yeah, it's, they're not there right now. <laughs> but on days like today, we still have the backyard. So the backyard is a wonderful feature. It, it feels like we're, you know, we're in a nice community here, but we're enclosed with the greenery. We have access to the stairs down here. We can go uh, into the backyard. Uh, go down and play with the kids, do gardening, uh, or on days like today where it's not wonderful, we can go back inside. Downstairs on the first floor is Max's room. His big sister's room is right next door. Okay, we have Olivia's bedroom. It's very pink. And last I heard, there was talk about painting the ceiling pink, and I heard something about polka dots on the walls. But uh, she's at that age right now where she's uh, discovering her little decorating skills. Okay, here we have our master bathroom. Um, when we originally were doing the rebuild and designing this, we wanted something that was very private and a little bit spa-like. But there was one thing missing. There was a lot of concern about not having a window in this area because of the natural light, especially when our house is so full of windows. But I actually love not having a window now because I feel very private. There's never that thought that you have to close a blind or close the curtain. The steam shower, uh, what more can I say? It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you've seen the rain outside, it gets cold. It's lovely to come in after a day of skiing or biking and have a steam shower. We have the rain shower head, which is also, it's a big treat. And again, it's low flow, so no need to feel guilty about splashing out. The stone that we used here is sourced from a local company in Vancouver, and I fell in love with this, first of all because of the color, but also because it has the look of seashells that are embedded in it, so it kind of gives you that feeling of sand and sun. This is our master bedroom, and this area is our area. It's the children stay out there on the other side of the door, and this is our space. This is a um, continuation of the bamboo flooring. We did add some area rugs just to keep the noise down, but we did like the, the clean lines of this and the cleanliness of it. The sitting area is just a nice area to escape. Once again, with coffee, uh, you can go outside onto the deck, sit down, look at the garden, look at the mountains. It's just a nice area to get away. I've been known to escape here often. When it came to landscaping the backyard, Julie and Mike kept on recycling. So here's a great example of the reno trying to save as much of the, uh, uh, the reno materials we had. When we dug out the foundation and all the old rocks, we were able to raise the back property here a, a good four feet. That was important to us because it's uh, a little bit swampy and a bit of a riverbed here. So raising it up allowed us to control that moisture. But instead of bringing in trucks of fill, we were able to fill most of it with the movement of the house and the foundation. This house took eight months to renovate. But maybe the big accomplishment is that Julie and Mike recycled an incredible 75% of the old house. Proof, you can renovate and go green at the same time. We were able to control the bins throughout the, the build so that instead of going to the bin, it would be put off to the side and we'd range for it to go to a new home. 